So the more of that that was in the urine, the lower the total testosterone levels. So you can see there's an association there. I mean, if you're trying to optimize your testosterone, I wouldn't recommend just intentionally ingesting pieces of plastic. Yeah, so one of those is DEHP, and you would have to have some pretty high doses of that to actually cause someone to be infertile, a male to be infertile anyway. So the like mouse human equivalent uh, was something like four grams daily for a 60 kilogram male of pure DEHP. And this was a, I believe, lavage or it was put in their food that they were eating. So, you know, 500 milligrams per kilogram in a mouse, you know, impaired spermatogenesis. But that was corrected with lycopene. So mm. lycopene seems to serve as a, you know, testicular antioxidant. Uh, antioxidant in general, I would say in the standard American diet. Mm -hmm. uh, I think everyone agrees on this at this point. It's not great. And there's not a lot of flavonoids or antioxidant support. So perhaps anything that is in the environment is going to, people are going to be more susceptible to that mm -hmm. because they don't have a layer of defense to prevent any negative consequences of that. Yeah, that's a good summary. Uh, there's obviously other antioxidants or um, <clears throat> reactive oxygen species, um, recycling compounds, she legit is potentially one, taurine can be good for testicular health as well, but those do not have evidence to correct or reverse the impaired spermatogenesis. Um, so I guess the question is, well, doc, um, you know, I'm worried about heavy metal exposure. I need a blood test for that, right? I'm worried about phthalate exposure. I need a blood test for that as well. So what blood tests do I order? All of them, just like for thyroid, every one that starts with a T. Uh, but in actuality, this has been looked at, you know, how would we potentially, you know, if these things are an issue, mm -hmm. look at monitoring them or looking at population exposure. And the more recent studies have looked at urinary levels as a more accurate marker because um, forever chemicals doesn't quite describe the phthalate class. A lot of these are actually pretty rapidly metabolized and excreted in the urine. So mm -hmm. you may you know, miss them or misestimate the levels if you're looking at them in the blood. Um, and one problem with the urinary testing is you may have genetic differences in how you metabolize these things, how much you're excreting versus retaining. Mm -hmm. But if you're looking at the population averages and larger sample sizes, it's going to give you a good idea of what's going on there. So, you know, another claim that was put out there was that phthalates accounted for uh, about 11,000 deaths was the number they threw out each they, year. Yeah. Annually yeah. among us men due to the phthalates causing low testosterone. And you can find a piece of data that shows an association to, you know, substantiate that if you're wanting to go to IamRight.com and build your case. <laughs> and there was association with, um, inverse association between your total testosterone and then how much of uh, benzophenone 3, uh, which is a plasticizer, that is found in the urine. So the more of that that was in the urine, the lower the total testosterone levels. So you can see there's an association there. I mean, if you're trying to optimize your testosterone, I wouldn't recommend just intentionally ingesting pieces of plastic. Uh, mm -hmm. But how big of an effect this is at the population level it's there and it's kind of in the back of my mind once in a while when you see a case where it's like, well, there's no real underlying causes we can point to, but I really don't think it's the tipping point and the root cause of why our testosterone levels have been dropping as a population. Yeah, I think it's also interesting that they say the reason why these deaths are attributed to phthalate exposure is because, not directly, but because the phthalate exposure causes low testosterone, but... Um, we're generally not worried about low testosterone causing death. So what's the mechanism of that? Because hypogonadism is not a, um, a terminal Life condition. <laughs> uh, some people would have you believe that even normal levels of testosterone are life-threatening if they're not in the top 10% of the range. Clinics have you know, various I've, targets out there. I've gotten flack for saying a total testosterone of 550 with a free T of 25 can be optimal. You're trying and to I, kill people. I stand by that <laughs> statement. Total testosterone of 550, free testosterone. Again, calculate an accurate one with SHBG, 25 nanograms per deciliter. 
that is an optimal testosterone for most individuals with normal androgen density and sensitivity. Yep. Uh, write in the comments, please, to help the algorithm if you disagree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So another interesting study looking at this testosterone connection found that it didn't seem, I think this looked at individuals all the way from age 20 to like very, very old adults. So like 75 plus. Mm -hmm. And I don't think they found a significant association, but then they did a subgroup analysis and we know the more ways you split up the data, the more likely you are to find something just by chance. But they found mm -hmm. that the men who seemed to be the most susceptible to this were men ages 40 to 60. Uh, looking at the association of these DEHP metabolites in the urine, um, and then their you know, likelihood that that's affecting their testosterone. So there was a, an association there for that age group, but not in others. So clearly this isn't reproducible across all plasticizers and plasticizer metabolites. Mm-hmm.